we've gotten fixed cost under control. Uh, there's price discipline in the market. Uh, we're not chasing after market share by sacrificing profit or you know, prices that uh, people who like our product would pay. So, and uh, probably the most important thing is that costs are, um, have been, re fixed costs have been reduced. And, you know, which used to be actually even a reason to cut prices so we could get at least some sales to contribute to those fixed costs. And that, you know, with the uh, rationalization of capacity and employment in our industry, we don't have that problem anymore. The costs are much more flexible. So that's a major improvement for all three automakers in Detroit. It's essentially making long-term commitments like we have to our labor force, um, you know, over time that uh, look like they're only three or four years in a contract, but really with 30, 40 year commitments uh, to very, very large costs that uh, the companies could not support, uh, primarily due to inflation, let's say in health or loss of market share, but these were long-term commitments that actually helped drive the companies under uh, when at times became um, you know, when the, when the cycle finally hit. Now uh, costs are much more flexible. In good times, everybody benefits. In bad times, everybody has to give up a little bit, uh, which maintains the, you know, the competitiveness of the company, its survivability. We've had a bad time um, in the past, uh, basically trying to force feed the customer. Um, you know, designs long past uh, having enough evidence that they didn't really want this product. Now, really, there's. We're producing the finest line of passenger cars, especially passenger cars, uh, in the last 35 years in Detroit because we are finally taking them very seriously and giving them the technology from Europe they really do want to buy. Wiser marketing and product planning is in place today than it was even five years ago. And um, we have a much bigger tool of, uh, you know, a, a toolkit to work on the market with. And we are re-engineering the product faster. You know, Chrysler refreshed its cars uh, almost within a year, and uh, now a whole or, you know, raft of absolutely brand new cars uh, within another year or so. And that's lightning speed compared to the past. I don't think the auto industry is a particularly profitable industry compared to many other industries in the world and large corporations. We know the energy people make massive amounts of profits. Uh, pharmaceuticals make very high margins. Uh, telecommunications and uh, personal computer firms like Apple now are setting world records, as well as internet firms like uh, Google, Microsoft, um, you know, Amazon, uh, so on and so forth. But even a more traditional firm like General Electric uh, earns over 20 billion a year and beats the average uh, margin we see for the very best auto companies like Toyota and Volkswagen. Uh, considering what we have to do to compete with each other and expand this market by 200%, uh, put two billion more vehicles on the road in the next 20 years, and also meet the demands of 100 governments uh, of what they want the car to be and act and perform like, we aren't making enough money. Okay, not even close. I mean, the very best auto firms in the world only make a 6% margin. And uh, you take the top automotive firms in, in, in the global 500 and put them together, they won't earn as much as Apple this year. Now I know Apple's off the wall, but we need, we do a lot more than make a small square to fit in your hand and lights up overnight. I mean, we really, really have a lot of engineering, a lot of work to do and a lot of people to put on wheels and need to make that profit.